we're going to get started. Thanks for coming today, guys. Um, I feel very, uh, me and Jeff both feel very uh, humbled and uh, grateful that you guys would come, listen to us, flap our jaw for about an hour or so. So very, 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 very humbled right now. Very humbling experience. Um, my name, well, both names Jeff, so it's pretty easy to figure out who we are. Um, tell you a little bit about ourselves before we get into it. I've been training and working for a company called Freedom Fitness, formerly uh, Dynamic Fitness, if any of you guys are familiar, for almost 10 years. Um, personal training and then the last seven uh, training director role. Uh, so I've trained a lot of people, worked with a lot of trainers. Um, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is you know, based on experience, things that we've seen work, um, things that we've done personally for ourselves, things that we've implemented with clients. Um, you know, neither of us are, you know, we're not dietitians or uh, nutritionists or anything like that. So today's goal isn't going to be about telling you what diet to do, how to eat, what to eat or anything like that. It's going to be more like, it's going to be along the lines of the principles that go along with losing fat or building muscle, right? And these are universal principles across the board, uh, barring some type of, um, some type of disease or something like that that might, or, or abnormality that might be uh, holding you back, right? So... Um, that's a little bit about me. I'll let Jeff introduce himself, tell him, tell, tell him about yourself, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into it today. So I'm also Jeff. Um, I've been training for about three, four years now. Um, before that, I was a manager at uh, Fitness, so I've been in the fitness industry, honestly, for 10 years, almost. Um, I just started working with people though, about three years ago. Um, so I'm actually going to school uh, for human performance and nutrition. I'm getting my master's in that, and my end goal is to become an RD. Um, so I am passionate about, you know, nutrition just because I feel like everyone that comes in here, you know, they, they put in the time to work out, but one of the biggest things that hold people back is the nutrition, right? And we get a lot of questions like, like people, you know, they obviously want to know more about nutrition, but I feel like they ask questions like, hey, what do you think about this guy or what do you think about that? And our goal today is to, to, to kind of tell you, you know, not which diet is best, but so you don't have questions like, hey, which diet is best? You know, we're going we're gonna to tell you. The principles, then you don't have to question, you know, keto best or intermittent fasting or something like that. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Um, also too, like any the, the little uh, half sheets of paper we gave you guys at the end of today, uh, fill that bad boy out if you want to. You don't have to, but if you do fill it out, we're gonna turn it at the end. We're gonna draw three names and three people will get uh, freedom fitness t-shirt today. Too. So fill that bad boy out and uh, turn it in at the end. Okay. So we'll click. Click. Justin's gonna be our, our click guy. So we want to talk about some of the benefits of, of, what, of fat loss, losing losing body fat, building muscle. Uh, click. <laughs> no, we don't have like that. We, of course, we have like a or something. Like um, so some of the benefits of, of losing body fat, you know, you'll be healthier, right? Um, I'm going to let Jeff explain a little bit more about what that means, because healthy can be like a very broad and subjective term, right? So Yeah, so, so what, we, what we mean by healthier is... So the higher your BMI is, the more likely you're the higher your risk of diseases such as like type 2 diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, um, you know, some, some females run into pregnancy problems, uh, and then increased risk for uh, C-section, you know, high blood pressure. So there's a lot of things that increase your risk when you do have the higher BMI. So, you know, these are going to be things that you want to work on and why you, you know, want to lose uh, body fat. Um, another thing is it also enhances your physique. So obviously, you know, you, you see this person right here, and they lose body fat, you know, lower and lower. You get that, that tone look that you want. Uh, you also are more flexible and mobile, uh, so you can move better. Uh, more endurance, uh, less injury prone, that's a big one too, less injury prone. And then, honestly, you just feel better all the time. You know, the, the lower your body fat is. I mean, if you, if you take off 50 pounds, you got 50 less pounds, you got to walk around. You know, so you're going to be, you're just going to feel better, honestly, all the time. So yeah, yeah. I think the, the big part is like with the you know being healthier, like you, you have a less risk factor for developing like things like he was talking about type two diabetes, and heart disease, and high blood pressure, and all that type of stuff. It doesn't mean you definitely will, but it just lowers your risk of contracting that disease. Right. To do with fat loss, like you know, make sure it is your goal. Like if, if you feel fine with where you're at, that's that's fine. Like I think that's a big things. People yeah. they need to look a certain way, right? If you feel like you're you're good and you, you hit all these things. You're fine, you know, make sure it is your goal. Um, if, 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 you know, if you have. So, click. Alright, so some benefits of building some muscle. Click. 
right? So you're going to be stronger. It's going to improve your activity in the day of living. You'll be able to do more, easier to do stuff, uh, more powerful, but again, less injury prone, right? You know, the more muscle you have surrounding your joints, like the less chances of injuring a joint, less chance of, you know, problems with knees, hips, elbows, shoulders, stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's funny, so I have a little story with that one. So I had a trainer that worked for me a long time ago, and uh, he's a power lifter, right? And so that's what his goal is, to build muscle, lift weights, like lift as heavy as possible. Right? And, I mean, he's a big dude, too. So he, and he got into a car wreck, um, a pretty bad car wreck. Um, he was on his way home from a powerlifting competition, actually. And uh, got flown to the hospital, spent probably about a week in the hospital, made, eventually made a full recovery, still competes today. Uh, but anyways, it was interesting, he told me, because he got T-boned, and the guy was going like 60, 70 miles an hour and like just smashed his car. And the doctor literally told him, was like, if you were not, if you did not have as much muscle as you had, like, you'd be dead, right? Because you had so, like, I mean, this is an extreme example, but he's like, you would, you would probably be dead at this point. You know, so that's like the extreme end of that, but you know, just the more muscle you have surrounding the joints, like the less chance of, you know, you jump out of a, jump off of something, jump down the stairs, jump out of a tree, I don't know if I'm going to jump out of a tree anymore, but, uh, you know, you're, you're probably not going to sprain it either, or twist an ankle or something like that, just, <laughs> except for Justin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it can make you healthier to a point, right? You know, there is, uh, you know, there, there, there does become a point where building muscle, it, Becomes like probably not that good for you anymore. I'm sure we can all think of examples or you know know what that extreme case might be. Uh, you know, it also enhances your aesthetics, right? You know, gives you that tone look. You know, people come in, they say, you know, you know, we, we want to build tone, we want to be more tone, we want to be more cut, whatever. Like that just basically means you're building muscle. So. Do do I think one thing is when people think that you're going to build muscle, they think you're going to look like this jacked, massive bodybuilder. And honestly, if you're not on the drugs that they're on, and you're not actually like trying to get that big, it's, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna have that total look that, that everyone wants. Um, so that's one thing that I tell people too is like, you know, they hear muscle and they kind of they kind of freak out a little bit. Like I don't, I don't look like a football player or a bodybuilder. I'm like, trust me, it, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's, unless that's your goal, it ain't. It's, it's pretty hard to do that. So. And it takes a while to, to put it on too. So. Yep. Yep. Click. All right, so this is kind of, these are going to be the principles that we're going to talk about today. Um, so this is the Renaissance Periodization uh, Diet Pyramid. Has anybody heard of Renaissance Periodization in here by chance? A few people, cool. Um, so basically, what this is, is these are going to be our priorities when we're trying to diet for body composition. And that's one thing that we want to let you guys know, too, again, is that this is for body composition, not general health. These are going to change just a tiny bit. It's for general health, but for body composition, fat loss, muscle gain, these are going to be your priorities. Um, so, for example, you know, for a pyramid, you want to stop, you want to start at the bottom, right? You don't want to start at the top. So, a lot of times, people will come in and they want, you know, they, they, they talk about all the supplements that they're on. It's like, all right, that's cool, and that's awesome that you're, that you're doing that, but just realize that it's it's just a tiny little microscopic, you know, uh, percent of the, the overall pyramid. Uh, and at the bottom, like you see, we got we have calories. That's going to be the, the most important. Um, and so, just to go over all real quick, calories is going to be how many calories you can put, consume each day. Macros are going to be your uh, protein, carbs, fats. Timing is going to be how many meals you eat per day, when you eat those meals. Uh, composition is going to be like what type of food it is. So, like for example, uh, nutrient dense foods, which are going to be foods that are higher nutrients, less in calories compared to energy dense, which are going to be more calories compared to uh, nutrients. And then at the very top, supplements and hydration. Yeah. So like composition, like the, the difference between eating a cookie or, or a carrot, like cookie is going to be very energy dense, no nutrients, carrot, high nutrients, low energy dense. Well, and, and we'll get in more into this in a little bit, but for example, food composition, people will be like, hey, I just got it, I got to eat clean. And it's like, you know, that's good, but you can still, if you're just eating clean, you can still this out on these things, and you're not, and you're, you're kind of focusing on the, the wrong things uh, once again. And then the thing that trumps everything is going to be adherence. So that's going to be the big thing. I mean, if you can't adhere to any of it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. None, none of it matters. So that's something that we're going we're gonna to go over here in a little bit too. It's adherence as well. But, all right. Uh, so calories. So this is going to be a big thing. Who's heard of like calories in, calories out, energy, energy balance? Cool. Most, most people have heard of that. 
I think a lot of people here and they're just like, oh, whatever. But so it's gonna be the most important thing. So it's gonna be about 50% of the pyramid. So this alone is gonna be able to alter weight more than more than any other thing, uh, any of any of those other principles. Um, so it's on the right here. So the energy balance is gonna be energy in and energy out. So energy in is gonna be all the calories you consume, right? So everything you eat is gonna have calories in it, right? I mean, even those handful of like Skittles or whatever candy that you go and grab in the middle of the day, like those are gonna count. Unfortunately, the body doesn't know that it's just a little snack, you know, it's still gonna count it as uh, energy. So that is gonna be the energy inside of things and then the energy out is gonna be basically your resting metabolic rate. So that's basically your the energy you burn when you're just at rest. So when you're just sitting there, like right now when you fidget, that's gonna be your, your sorry, not when you fidget, that's gonna be neat. But resting metabolic rate is just everything that your body does to, you know, what, what, how, how would you say that? It would yeah, be basically just what your body does to keep you alive. Breathing, your heart's beating, your brain's working, like basic, basic bodily functions is the calories you burn. And, and yeah, those, like, people won't realize how much that actually, like, you know, they, you're just sitting there, you're, you know, your body's using calories. Huh? And that's going to make up about 60 to 70 percent of, of that energy out side of the equation. Um, another one is going to be the TEF, it's called the thermic effect of food. So even when you eat food, it, you know, it takes energy to absorb and digest the food in your stomach too, all right? So that's going to use uh, calories as well. Um, another thing is going to be your exercise activity. So this is where it starts to vary a little bit from person to person. Exercise activity is going to be, you know, running, come in here, lift weights, whatever it may be, that's going to be the energy, that's going to be exercise activity. And like I said, that's going to vary from person to person. Um, so there's no really number there to put on how much that is. And then the last one is NEAT. So NEAT's going to be your non-activity exercise thermogenesis. And that's, so kind of like what we talked about earlier when you just sit there, but this is going to be things like blinking, uh, fidgeting, talking, that's your need. And once again, that's going to be, that's going to vary from person to person. Um, Two, like just when you do everyday activities, that's also considered neat. So walking, walking into the, uh, the gym, that's going to be some neat uh, stuff around the house. That's also neat. I mean, you know, you're, you're burning in, you're burning calories just doing those everyday things. And so that's the energy outside the equation. And so as you guys can see here, to maintain it, if you're consuming the same amount that you're expending, that's going to, that's called maintenance, right? So you're going to maintain your body weight there. Your, your weight will, will stay the same. To gain weight, we want to have a positive energy balance, right? So we want to consume more than we burn off. Um, and then as you can see, that's work you in, that's what you can expend. Slowly over time, your body is going to, you know, put on weight. And then negative energy balance, that's going to help us lose weight. And so that's when we expend more energy than we consume. Um, so, the thing about this is it's going to vary from, from person to person. Uh, there's going to be a lot of variables for that. So let's let's click next here. So, a lot a lot of people like want to know like how many calories they should eat, like hey, how many calories should I eat? And honestly, it, there's really no way to tell. Um, it's going to vary on many different things. So body size. So the bigger you are, the more the more energy you'll consume or the more energy that you'll burn. So, so bigger people, you have a bigger budget essentially. Um, the smaller you are, the less, cal the, the less calories you can take in. Um, gender, females, energy out, expenditure is lower than males. Exercise and training amount, obviously that's gonna, the, gonna alter the energy outside of things. Um, another one I wanna hit on, uh, genetics. So a lot of people will say, oh, I, you know, I have bad genetics. And, and that is true. Like some people have good genetics to, to lose weight and some people just, their genetics suck. Um, <laughs> I mean, they do. Like obviously some people's genetics suck. Uh, and, and it's like, it is an excuse, but there are things that we can do to, to, to overcome that too. Because um, that is a thing. Like genetics are a thing. Like some people can, can expend, like for example, let's take somebody that's like six foot seven, male, and it's 350 pounds. I mean, they're... Their maintenance level of calories could be anywhere from like five to six thousand a day, okay? But then you take a female that's like five foot one, 115 pounds, like she's gonna maybe be able to eat 
not even 2,000 calories, you know. So, and, and to top it off, if she doesn't have the best genetics for, for weight loss, like, it's going to be even lower than that, too. So, we can see how one person could eat uh, 4,000 calories and be in a, in a negative energy balance, and then a female could be eating 2,000 calories and be in a positive energy balance. She's going to gain weight, unfortunately. Um, another thing that's going to affect this is age, too. As you age, it's going to go down a little bit, too. It's not going to be anything crazy, but, you know, I don't have an exact number for you, but say, for example, it is 100 calories a day. I mean, that's, you know, that's a couple, that could be a couple snaps per day that's going to put you into that positive energy balance. Um, so, so age will play a role. Another one is that neat. So, this is what I kind of harp on with my clients is make sure you're staying active. Like the knee is going to play a significant role. Like just when you're at your house, try and get up and move more, um, park a little bit further away. Uh, if you have like an upstairs or downstairs, put some stuff upstairs that you know you're going to have to use, then you can, then you can walk upstairs. But these are going to be things that add up over time. It may not seem like much in one day, but over time, these are, these are going to add up. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anything you want to hit on that or. No, I mean, I think you kind of hit it. Oh, I was going to ask you guys, what do you guys think is the biggest uh, factor why people can't stick to their diet? Well, don't look. <laughs> Boredom, yeah. Well, anyway, so it's actually hunger, believe it or not. Uh, so hunger is going to be one of the biggest culprits of, of diet here. I mean, I feel like if, if you ask anybody why, it's just like, I was just starving, I sold food, like I ate, you know. It's going to be hunger. Um, and so, and the thing that sucks is when we diet, we're in that negative energy balance. Um, remember, we're consuming less calories than we're expending. You're going to, the, your hormones are going to act up and, and, and you're going to start to get cravings and hunger. You know, they're both going to go up. So so as you diet, these hormones are going to go up. So it's going to make it tougher to, to lose weight over time. So uh, some things you want, some people are going to have higher hunger levels. Uh, people that grew up with less focus on nutrition, uh, mealtime and structures, uh, we've eaten poorly most, we eat, you know, we eat poorly most of our life, you know, we're going to have higher hunger levels. Um, like I mentioned, hormonal fluctuations can influence cravings. Uh, habitual emotional eating, which is kind of out of our scope of practice, but if that is an issue, you know, you are going to probably, we will have higher hunger levels. And then, and then low energy expenditure. If we're living a sedentary lifestyle, we have a job that doesn't allow us to move much, for whatever reason, our body, the, the hunger signals get messed up when we're when we're more sedentary. Um, I, I don't know why that is. It's just, I guess, what we're programmed for. I don't know why, but uh, when we're when we're sedentary, we, for whatever reason, are, are we want to eat more. We have more cravings. So that's something to be to, to look out for. You know, if you are trying to diet for fat loss, the best advice is to, to try to stay as active as possible. Um, Seek out that activity. It's going to be one of those things where your body's going to, the lower, the lower the amount of food you take in, your body's going to want to naturally be more sedentary, and that's like a evolutionary thing, right? I mean, go back to when we were evolving, like when there was, we didn't know when we were going to eat, right? We didn't know when our next meal was going to be, so our body's really good at holding on to extra, to extra energy, it's just because you know it's evolved to, to, you know, hold on to food when it sees it. Um, so yeah, that's something to look out for. Talk about some strategies like how you're going to manage manage the hunger. Uh, <coughs> food volume, kind of dig into it. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. You know, with food volume though, so pick food that are going to be more satiating, but not might not be super calorie dense, right? You know, so you can see some pictures of veggies on the other side over there. Veggies are you're not going to be able to eat a ton of vegetables, and they're going to fill you up. Protein is pretty typically pretty satiating. That whole right there with protein intake, you're not you're going to eat way less the amount of chicken breast than you would potato chips, right? Um, you know, so food volume is probably one of the most crucial things you can do. So when you're planning, like, what type of food you're going to eat, when you're, on a, when, you, when you're on a weight loss plan, is pick foods that are going to be more dense with energy, right? If you don't, you know, if you're going you're gonna to be feeling hungry all the time, and your adherence is going to be super low because you're just going to be hungry always. Eventually, you're going you're gonna to break. We're all going to break at some point, and we're going to eat that food we shouldn't eat. We're going to binge or whatever. Um, Timing your nutrients. Liquid calories is a big thing, right? Consuming calories, 
that are liquid forms, so things like soda, coffees can be a huge culprit if we're going to go into Starbucks, get our favorite Starbucks, put creamers in it, stuff like that, uh, teas, those can be a huge culprit because they're not satiating at all, they're, gonna, they're not going to make you feel full, um, but they can, be, they can be pretty energy dense, you know, just for an example, like one can of Coca-Cola, like a 12 ounce, I mean, you're, you're looking at like close to 250 calories just for that and you're not going to if anything, you may feel more hungry, honestly, yeah. after, after eating. Um, you can't eat. And then caffeine, question mark. So caffeine can actually um, help suppress appetite and give you energy to do stuff, right? Which is going to turn, you know, if we go back a couple slides, don't actually do it. Um, but if we go back a couple slides, you know, you know, increasing energy expenditures throughout the day can help. Caffeine can help with that because it's going to help suppress your appetite a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, and it will also increase your energy expenditure. So that can be a helpful way to be able to manage one, one big one, too, uh, is make sure when you are eating, really try to slow down your eating. I mean, how many times do we yeah. eat and it's at, we're either driving at our, at our desk working or just watching TV, you know, and you just, you're eating and next thing you know, you're like, shit, I didn't even know I ate, honestly. <laughs> and so, like, just make, try, try, to, try to eat as much as you can at, at a table and, and slow down. Um, because for whatever reason, it just takes, you know, you thought it takes a little bit of time for your brain to signal, get the signal that you're full. So, so just slow down um, and make sure you're trying to eat as undistracted as, as possible. Yeah. I mean, we've been conditioned over the years, like, you know, if we were watching a movie, like, your auto, one of your automatic things is like, all right, I need some eat while I watch this movie or drink. Mm-hmm. Don't. Don't need that. But we've been conditioned to feel like that, you know, like going to the theaters, like you get popcorn, you get a soda, you get a beer. You know, you do the same thing at home, you're binging your favorite Netflix show, like you want something to munch on, right? So breaking that habit can be tough. Um, so find, you know, maybe foods that are a little bit higher in the volume, uh, you know, more uh, more nutrient, less energy dense type foods to snack on maybe while you do it. It kind of helps slowly break that cycle. A good snack, you know, I don't want to recommend food, but a decent snack would be white popcorn. Because it's going to be a... Uh, without all the butter. Yeah, without all the butter. butter. But it's, it's food. It's Plain just like it, it, you know, fills up in your stomach and, and, and you eat less. So, so that would be yeah. a good substitute for a snack um, if you want to watch TV and have a little snack. Yeah. But like I said, without butter. Yeah. Total butter. All right. So let's get into uh, number part two of the pyramid. You see the second level up is macros. So short for macronutrients, right? There's three macronutrients, right? These are nutrients that yield energy. Protein, fats, and carbohydrates, right? Um, those are the only, those are the three, there is, alcohol does yield some calories, we'll get into that a little bit later, but those are the three main nutrients that are going to yield calories. The second most important piece of the puzzle, um, together, calories and macros make up 80% of the pyramid, right? So if you focus, you can, you can get to your goal by focusing on calories alone, it might take a little longer, but you can get significant progress by focusing on these two pieces of the puzzle first, and not even worry about timing, composition, supplementation, hydration, or anything like that. And you can get pretty stinking far. Hey, uh, real quick, I don't want to cut you off. You guys heard of if it fits your macros before? Like, have you guys heard of that diet? No one's heard. Okay, some people have. So basically, that's what this diet is. It's like the first two, and I mean, it, you, you can do both of these, and you're good to go. You know, eighty percent of, of it. So, but that's kind of what if it fits your macros. Is it's these two. Yeah, these and two. that and that can be taken to the extreme sometimes and get given a bad rap. You know, people will go to like, oh, you no, know, why are you eating McDonald's? But it fits my macros today, like. Honestly, like, you can, yes, you can still get good results, but, you know, the consequences of maybe eating McDonald's constantly over your whole life just because it fits your macros might not be the best option. Just throw that out there. Uh, but anyway, so we put some uh, nutrition labels on here to look at. So there's some things you can look at when you're looking at nutrition labels, right? The number one thing to look at is what's highlighted here. The serving size and the amount of calories in it, right? That fills that, fir- that bottom part of the pyramid, okay? Look at the serving size, look at the calories. We put... Um, Nutrition fact up here. So this is for I think this is Oreos. Oreos. Yeah, so Oreos. So serving size is only two cookies, right? It's 140 calories. Nobody, uh, maybe some people do. I know I do. If I eat an Oreo, I'm not eating just two freaking Oreos. <laughs> yeah. So before you know it, you can cross a thousand calories worth of Oreos, and it doesn't even feel like that. I mean, it's hyper palatable. They're hyper palatable foods. They're extremely tasty, so it's extremely easy to just keep going and going and going. And going. 
So like we can see here, like you can have, you can lose weight and eat, eat mostly Oreos, but the issue you're going to run into is it's not going to fill you up. You're going to be hungry. You're going to go back to that last one where it's like you're just always hungry and you're not going to be more likely to make a less than ideal choice. Than that one, so. Yeah. Your second priority to look at would be uh, what's highlighted in the orange right here, right? How much fat, carbs, and protein are in there. Uh, when it breaks down, what kind of fat's in there? Is it unsaturated? Is it saturated fat? You know, what kind of carbs? Is it sugar? Is it fiber? Is it, like, honestly, at the end of the day, like, don't, who, can, who cares? Like, that's that's pretty advanced, that's pretty advanced macro counting if you're looking that in depth into it. Look at the calories. Make sure you're only getting one serving, right? And then look at your macros, and then that's all you got to worry about. If it says there's 25 grams of carbs, there's 25 grams of carbs, right? Don't, don't, don't do the whole, I'm going to, Take out like oh it says five grams of sugar so it's really only five like now no. it's that many grams okay um, let's go to the next slide all right protein let's talk about protein real quick for a little bit um, this is the most important macronutrient for body composition right this is the nutrient that's going to help with muscle protein synthesis it's what's going to help build muscle for you. Right, building muscle is good because it's also muscle is also a very metabolic tissue. Just having more muscle means you burn more calories. Right, building muscle is good. Uh, the amount that you can consume it, it very varies person to person. It's an extremely individualized matter. But a broad range you can shoot for is anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight, like whatever you weigh. Right, it's where you'll be, and that's going to differ person to person. Um, usually, you can just make it real easy and just round up and just say, all right, every pound I weigh, I'm going to try to get that many grams of protein in each day. Okay. Um, round, it, round it to one. There's no real reason to eat more protein than this. You know, diets that advocate, you know, eat more protein than this, like, it's just going to get stored as body fat at that point, right? You don't need more. You don't need an, extra, an exorbitant amount of protein. If you're going to eat the protein, it's going to do its job, and then any more is, is extra. If you're over that, if you're... If your energy in is higher than your Correct. energy out, yeah. and you eat more protein, it's not like you're gonna. It's not gonna. It will still be stored as yeah. fat if you uh, don't hit that number one principle for your goal. Yeah, you, you still have calories. to be in a surplus to to, to, to get. You. If you're not in a surplus, you're not. Uh, so some of the benefits of uh, having of, of eating protein, you go and get click, put some uh, example sources of protein up there. You guys have the handout so you can see it too. But some of the benefits, it is going to increase muscle protein synthesis, which is going to increase more muscle, which can lead to less injury higher activity levels, um, and just overall being able to do more stuff. Um, good protein foods you can see down there. A good way to know about, like, kind of discern, like, is this protein or not? Should I count this as protein or not count this as protein, right? So basic, most animal pro animal proteins and animal products are typically going to be the proteins you want to shoot for. So things like nut butters, nut seeds, like, there might be protein in there. This is not quality protein, right? That's more, that's a different type of nutrient, which we'll get into, get into next, but... Um, animal, animal proteins, animal-based products, so things like Greek yogurt, cheese, stuff like that are good sources of protein. Uh, whey protein powder, right, if you go the supplement route, is one of your better sources of protein. Click. Let's go to the next Well, the big thing with protein, too, is when you are on a fat loss diet, it can't help with, like you said, satiety. So yeah. that, that's a big one, too, it's going to be the, the satiety. It'll make, yeah, it'll make you feel fuller. So. Yeah, one trick someone, I can't remember where I learned this at, but they're like, when you're eating, when you're eating, your plate or meal or whatever, always eat the protein first, right? And that way if you get full and you don't finish your meal, like, you know, say, you know, eat less carbohydrates or eat less of the fat that's in there, but eat your protein first and then eat the rest of the meal with it. All right, go and click it out. So carbohydrates, right? This is our primary source of energy for exercise. This is our primary source of energy just for, for living. Like the body needs carbs to function properly, okay? Uh, carbohydrates are not the enemy. Too many carbohydrates are it just so happens that carbohydrates are that food that are hyperpalatable, super easy to eat a lot of them, which can put you into that positive energy balance and thus cause you to gain weight. So be careful with this one. Uh, some of the benefits of uh, eating carbohydrates, like they're essential for performance. Um, that's really the it's, it's, it's main for energy. Anyway, so these are some good sources of uh, carbohydrates. Things like oatmeal, rice, potatoes, fruits, vegetables, beans, stuff like that um, are going to be their, their single ingredient foods. You know, potato, like I hear, I hear a lot, you know, rice, potatoes, I shouldn't have rice and potatoes. It's like, no, you can. It's when you have, when you add all the, uh, the fixings to the potatoes, the rice, stuff like that, that's when it becomes more of an issue. But a potato by itself is, 
Like, if you just eat plain potatoes, you're probably not going to overeat potatoes. Like, it's really tough. Yeah, they're 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 not that they're not that tasty. By themselves. So, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna put some fixings on them, you know, super things like, for example, like if you're gonna do a baked potato, maybe use some plain Greek yogurt in there versus sour cream, right? Uh, more on the protein, less on the less on the fat nutrient. Right. Let's go to the fats. So these are essential for health, right? They play a pretty limited role um, when it comes to manipulating body composition, like losing gaining weight, uh, as long as you're not overeating on fats, right? So usually one of the first things, you know, if I'm helping someone look at their macros, like carbohydrates are usually the one that we work on first, right? Because that's usually the one that's being way overeating. But anyways. Um, so fats, they're, they're good for health, you know, you need, uh, you need to eat fats or you're going to absorb um, certain types of vitamins like vitamin A, E, B, and K, that can be fats, so those vitamins very easily. Um, they're good for hormonal balances, right? A lot of hormones um, are made of proteins um, and they need fats to function properly. Um, the amount you want to probably shoot for is, any, is probably about 0.3 grams per pound of body weight, a rough yeah, that would be a minimum. I would say that would yeah. be a minimum. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's about where you want to be. I didn't say over here the, the amount you should consume on carb. Like, you could probably shoot for about a gram to maybe two grams per pound of, of body weight, depending upon what your energy is throughout the day. If you're not doing anything throughout the day, maybe on the lower end, you're extremely active, probably on the higher end of that. They've done studies where they're like, you know, what's better, high carb, low fat, or high fat, low carb, and honestly, at the end of the day, as long as, like, for body comp, as long as your protein is where it's at, your calories are where it's at, you can, you can go whichever way you want. If you like to have more fats, then go that route. If you like to have a little bit more carbs, you go that route. Um, but they've done studies, and, and once again, that, that energy balance, energy in, energy out, is you know, the number one thing that, you know, is going to get you that weight loss or weight gain. Correct. You know, so um, another another quick word on fats, and then we'll move on to the very on the next slide. So be careful with fats too. A lot of fat nutrients can be extremely tasty. Peanut butter, for example. Uh, it can be very easy to eat a lot of fat nutrient and not realize it. Fat fat calories are twice as dense as protein and carbohydrate calories. So what I mean by that is, for every gram of fat you consume, you're getting nine calories roughly. And for every gram of protein or carb, you're getting roughly four calories. So it's over twice as dense with calories per nutrient. Okay? And then your examples of uh, good fats like nuts, nut butter, avocados, seeds. Um, I have on there? Cold, yeah, it's like cold water fishes, like salmon, stuff like that. You can get your omega-3s. Yeah. Move on. All right, so next, uh, meal timing. So this is going to make up about 10% of the pyramid. Um, how many people get asked, or like, they, they have the question, like, how many meals should I eat per day? Like, you've heard, like, you know, you need to eat, like, eight times a day, or, you know, six. Yeah, you like, there's there's a lot of different uh, numbers out there in terms of how many meals you should consume. And, and once again, they've done studies on this, like, you know, somebody that eats eight times a day compared to somebody that eats two or three. And, and once again, meal timing is not a big deal as long as your calories are equated for the day. Um, so, for example, you could eat eight times a day. But if you're over your calories, it, it, you know, it just doesn't matter. You're going to go gain weight. Um, now, some cool things that we can do with, with meal timing, though, is it's probably going to be a better idea to spread them out a little bit just because, you know, if you go a long time without eating, you know, you get more hungry and then you're more likely to make a less than ideal choice. Uh, and so, ideally, I think probably anywhere from three to six times per day is going to be the best for, for uh, meal timing. And that's just... How, how it fits your schedule. If you can't eat six times a day, then, then go three times a day. Um, but if you have to eat all the time, you know, you can go up to six times per day. Uh, one to two times, I mean, you can do that as long as your calories are equated for the day, but like I said, you'll run into that hunger issue. Um, so it's meal timing, who's sort heard of intermittent fasting in, in here? Um, and so that's kind of where like you would put intermittent fasting is, is in this meal timing. I mean, it can be a great tool. Like there's nothing special about for, for body composition, there's nothing, nothing special about intermittent fasting, um, but it can help some people that say, for example, they like to eat a lot, of, you know, you like to eat a lot of food at night. Like, if you cut that time out to where you can't eat, you know, you're, you're skipping out on a bunch of meals there. And usually when we eat at night, it's going to be, you know, ice cream, chips, you know, all, all the stuff that's, that's high in the calories. So, so we can't use intermittent fasting as a, as a tool to, to bring this 
to lower this, these calories in. Um, but yeah, meal timing is also, like I said, how many meals per day, how spaced, are, how spaced out they are, timing around your workouts, and like how many, what your macro breakdown is per, uh, per meal. So. Yep, and just like Jeff said, it's a tool. Like intermittent fasting lets you make some eat less calories, and it works. Good. It's good, it works. But no, that's why it works, is because it's making you eat less calories if your goal is to lose. I know, I know some people, they, they have an issue where they've tried intermittent fasting and they end up binging at some point because they are just so hungry. You know, yeah. They restrict themselves for a certain amount of time and then they can't eat. They're just like, just give me whatever I can yes. eat. And it's usually something very uh, high in energy. Yeah, I've, I've tried it and it, you definitely feel like that. By the time it's time to eat, like I'm freaking starving and I'm going to destroy whatever is in front of me. Also, another one on this, who's heard the myth that like, if you eat after like 6 p.m., it's just going to turn into to body fat? Like, I'm sure we all heard of that, right? That's not, you know, that, that's, that's pretty much a myth. There might be a tiny, tiny bit, but it's not going to be anything to worry about. You know, what happens, once again, is when we eat after 6 p.m., it's usually in front of the TV, it's snacks, it's going to be ice cream, pizza, whatever, maybe not pizza, chips. chips. Um, so that's kind of where that myth got started. And it, and it is a myth, you know, you can eat up until you go to bed, but just as long as your calories, once again, I know I've said this like 15 times, but as long as your calories are uh, equated for the, for the day, based on your goal. Yep. 100%. Good. Cool. Next. Food comp. Right, so this is way up there, about 5% of that pyramid, right? You know, so at the end of the day, like, you know, the, the type of food you're eating, as long as calories are equated for, your macros are in place, you know, let's say we're even on the time, we're, we're even timing our meals appropriately now, too. Right, the next thing that matters is like, okay, what kinds of food are we actually eating right now? Um, you know, the goal would be to aim probably 80% of your diet in more unprocessed foods, more or less for health reasons. Not necessarily for body composition changes, right? You know, but you know, some people don't care. They don't really care how healthy they are. They just want to look better, okay? But I don't know about you, but I want to perform well and live a super long time as well. Uh, you know, so if you aim for more than about eighty percent of your diet from the unprocessed foods, if you guys look at that food choices list we gave you, the foods that are in the best choices category, if you choose like eighty percent of the time you're eating out of those lists, you're doing you're doing pretty good. You know, this can also be another tool, just like timing can be a tool to help with calorie balance. This can also be a tool to help with calorie balance, right? If you're eating more unprocessed foods, chances are you're probably going to eat less, less calories anyways, right? Like I said, like you're not going to eat nearly as much calories from chicken breast as you would from potato chips. You're not going to eat nearly as many calories from carrots and celery than you would candy or cookies or whatever our vice might be, right? Uh, so, if it, and also too, like if health is more of the goal, right? If you're like, you know, I don't really care about my body composition. Or I'm happy with where I'm at. You know, I just want to make sure I stay healthy. I want to make sure I keep my blood pressure in check and all that type of stuff. This should be a priority, right? Focus on your food composition and make sure you get more clean foods, and you'll you'll be all right. And as, as a consequence, you'll probably stay under your calorie goal, calorie equation. Um, you know, also too by focusing on food comp. You're going to get more of your micronutrients, so vitamins and minerals. You're going to get more of those into your diet. Um, if you are dieting, right, you have less calorie, a bunch of your calories is less, a, a, a good multivitamin might be a good option to take while you're doing that because you just have less calories you can eat throughout the day, so you might not be able to get all your micros that you do today, right? So also keep that in mind as well. But multivitamin is not necessary. If you are eating a variety of fruits and veggies, you're probably doing fine. Okay. Yeah, you can always take it as like a safety net too. Yeah. For anyone. The chance, yeah, your the chances of you eating getting too much of the vitamins and minerals is pretty pretty nil. It's probably not gonna happen. So if you're worried about it, take it. It's not gonna hurt you most likely. So good luck. Mm -hmm. It's the biggie. It's the biggie. Yeah, so, so adherence is going to be the biggest one. You, know, you, can, you can work on all these, but if, if you're not adhering to it, it's, you know, none of these principles are going to matter. Um, so, so one thing that, uh, that can help with this is, is having an internal locus of control. So this is uh, something that I think is really important when you're trying to uh, diet for whatever it may be. Um, so an internal locus of control is going to be like making sure you're taking care of the things that you can take care of, right? I mean, I feel like we all do it where we're like, oh, well, I just did it. 
I didn't have my meals because I got called into work. Or I just had, I had to go run to my, I had something come up at work or something like that, right? But at the end of the day, like that, you know, it is a valid excuse. But if, then, if your goal is to lose weight, you're going to have to to take, you know, some initiative. And, if, you know, if that say that happens where you go to work and you forget to meal prep or something. Well, think about it, learn from it. And the next time, you know, just start to prepare yourself. Because I feel like if you don't have that, if you blame outside factors, you're going to continue to run into the same issues. Uh, if you blame it on, you know, those, those issues, it's going to be like the same thing over and over and over again. You're not, not going to ever learn. But, you know, if it happens once, that's fine. But, you know, the more it happens and nothing changes, you know, you're, you're never going to get closer to, to you're never going to get closer to our goal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also adherence, it's, it's also dependent upon your the dedication to your current goal. Uh, you know, you got to be, you got to be able to not give in to, to, to temptations in front of you. I mean, you got to ask yourself, is, is eating this donut more important than me reaching my goal? You know, that's something we just, we need to ask ourselves when we're, when we're presented with these options, you know, especially around the holidays. Which, you know, I mean, enjoy yourself at the holidays, but, you know, just ask yourself, is this going to be worth my, my long term goal? Yeah. You know, and a smaller word on that. So, like, with going off what Jeff said, you know, especially, like, around the holidays, you know, we're getting together with family, friends, stuff like that. You know, you always ask yourself the question, um, you know, is having this drink, is eating this food, is it, is it, is it more important than my goal right now? And sometimes that, the answer might be yes. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you see your family once a year, or certain family members once or twice a year, and you want to have some drinks or you know have some good food with them, like there's nothing wrong with that. But doing that once or twice a year, that's also not going to derail your progress. You know, it's just like doing one workout is not going to get in shape. Like just like missing one workout isn't going to cause you to fall out of shape. One bad meal isn't going to cause you to gain a ton of weight. You know, vice versa. You know, so you know, ask yourself that question. That'll keep that locus of control like active. Right? Because you're at, you're like, yeah, this is more important than my goal right now, so I'm going to do it. Cool. Do it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. That's it. All I got. That's all I got. Right. Alcohol. So, but again, around the holidays, this can definitely play a, a role with your diet, whether or not you're losing or gaining weight, right? Uh, so, here's a good part, right? Alcohol has calories in it, right? So we talked about how many uh, calories are in each gram of macronutrients. So every gram of alcohol you consume is roughly uh, seven calories, right? So it's not as dense as fat, but a little bit more dense than uh, proteins and carbs. You know, so an example, like a, like a shot, like an ounce and a half of hard liquor, like whiskey or vodka or whatever, that's about 100 calories right there, right? Uh, depending, it's kind of a blurry picture. You know, usually light beers can be anywhere from 100 to 120 calories, you know, for beer. Some of your heavier beers, if you like more craft beers, like, Yays, things like that, you're looking at, you know, two, three, four, sometimes 500 calories a pop right there. Um, so be careful there. But if you stay in your negative energy balance and you still consume some alcohol, good news. You're fine. You're like, you're still, you'll still lose weight. Um, you know, or you're in positive gain, right? So put some negatives that can cause it. So it's going to hurt your sleep quality, right? Sleep is when you're going to recover. That's when you're going to burn the most fat, stuff like that. It's gonna hurt your sleep quality. Even though you might, you know, you might feel like you slept really good that night, but you don't really get into those deep REM cycles when you uh, have that in your system. Decreases your inhibitions. Um, I think it says it on there. Yeah. So your inhibitions are more reduced. Like, I'm not gonna ask anyone to raise their hands, but you know, how many how many of us have been driving, you know, driving home or late one night, you're just having some drinks, you're like, man, talk about something it's really good right now. You know, McDonald's or whatever it is, and you do it. You would never normally do that. You had a couple drinks. So you feel like doing it anyways, right? So your inhibitions are going to be reduced, so your chances of consuming high-dense calorie foods are a lot higher. So that's where more of the problem could arise with alcohol. Uh, muscle protein synthesis is harmed, so if your goal is to build some muscle, you're strength training a lot, it's, it's, it's going to harm It's going to harm that. You're not going to be building muscle while you're doing that. right? Your best advice is just, just consume in moderation. Don't go overboard. Uh, at the end of the day, if you're not, if you're not going overboard with it, it's not going to be a hurt you long term unless you're having like drinks every single day. That could be yeah, the, the more often and that the more could be you harmful. Do, the more yeah. often the more you do, the more likely it's gonna, you know, gonna Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just a calorie, right? As long as it's if you if you, you can account for it too. You know, you're gonna go out at night or you're gonna have some drinks at an event or something like that. Um, you know, maybe eat a little less food in the earlier part of the day and save some of those calories for later on in the day. 
thing so that way you can still enjoy yourself. Right? You just got to budget it appropriately. Anyone add on that? No. Did it one. Uh, so this person is in here actually. I it wasn't hundred percent sure if they're gonna show up, but uh, they're in here. So but this is a good case study. Uh, so this is Ryan, he uh, he's one of my clients. Um, so we started back around December 2017. Uh, you can see his numbers here, he was 230 pounds, uh, 6'3, 34, uh, it's a pretty sedentary job, has a young kid. Um, and some of the concerns he had when he when he saw me was uh, he was just fear not being full when, when he ate. Uh, Feels like he can't go a meal without soda. Uh, he must finish everything in front of him, and, and he doesn't have time to cook. So you know, we can see some of these things. Uh, there were issues where, you know, a meal without soda, you know, that's going to add in those those calories that we talked about that aren't going to keep you full. Uh, portion control must finish everything in front of me. You know, over time, you, can, you overeat a couple hundred calories per meal. That's going to add up over time, and then two. Uh, hard to find time to cook, that's going to be huge because then you're more likely to go to the easiest thing, which is usually going to be something that's high in calories, uh, very you know, tasty and dense. Um, his goals were to uh, cut body fat and gain muscle. And then as you can see, about a month in, he, he only weighed in a little bit higher at 233. Um, and so on this next slide, so, so I was Ryan probably in April, yeah, April. And so you can see we have we have all his weigh-ins here, and, and you can see when he started, you know, it slowly went up, but then over time, I mean, over I mean, how many months that nine months, you know, slowly, slowly went down. You know, he had a couple days where it went up, and then around the holidays, you know, it went back up, and then slowly went back down. So you can see, you know, it's an up and down thing, but as long as over time it's it's trending down, you know, that's what we want to see. So. With Ryan, we didn't go straight into counting calories or you know making sure you know he wasn't he wasn't tracking all his food or anything like that. We worked on we worked on fundamentals uh, based on his limiting factors. So for him, it was just making sure he got protein and ate most of his meals, uh, just consuming more water, meal prep a couple meals per week, and, and just slow down your eating. So these are all things that we talked about earlier. Not not one time where we like, hey, you gotta take out the soda. Um, so we said. Just add in more things compared to taking things out. I think that's a big mistake a lot of us make is we want to we try to cut things out and that's fine, but I feel like when you cut something out, you're more likely to want that even more. Uh, so instead, a good way to, to go about starting out with your weight loss goal is to do things like increase your protein intake, uh, uh, more water, and then you know if by, by having a couple meals prep per week, you know that cut back on his those meals that he was eating out or going to more higher uh, energy energy foods. So then we got him down to about 213. So we lost 20 pounds. We were just weight training. Uh, over time, you see it go down. And then he had a vacation coming up. So at that point, I felt like he had a lot of the basics down. So then it was time to where we could get a little bit more serious about it and start tracking macros. Uh, so we started tracking his macros. And he got down to 197. And, and that's in there on the left. You know, he's got some abs going, going to the beach. Uh, and so that would be like this area, like right here. And uh, so, yeah, you know, at that point we had those basics down, so then it was time to get a little bit more advanced with it. Um, and then phase three would be this part after it. So when people diet and they, they get, you know, they, they go down pretty hardcore, uh, afterwards your, 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 your hunger's out, you know, you, you get your hunger's higher, um, you're more likely to want to binge on, on, on tasty foods. So, we slowly introduce more food back into his diet, and, he, and I told him I was going to be like, hey, you know, your weight's going to go up just a little bit, but, that, but that's all right. You know, we're trying to just make sure your hunger goes down. Because after a diet, your hunger's going to be high, so we want to slowly bring those hunger levels down. Um, and now, currently, we're just continuing to uh, increase, sorry, so then we increase food because he wants to put on more muscle. So once again, you know, this is where he went up, so he was in a... Uh, he was taking in more calories than he was expending, and, and I had him track his weight uh, each day. We just made sure it was slowly going up. We didn't want it to go up too much, but just slowly, slowly going up over time. And then now, currently, we're just continuing to uh, fine tune his habits and just maintain his weight. So I mean, every time he checks in now, it's pretty much about two ten, right? Two ten. Some days it's at two oh eight, some days it's at two oh nine. He sometimes it's gone up to two two twelve, but he's staying within those those four four pounds basically. Um, and we're not, not tracking macros. I'm just telling them each week, hey, make sure you get your protein in, make sure you're getting veggies in a couple days a week. Um, so yeah, 
I chose this because I mean he he's done it all. He did he did the basics. He cut. He recovered. And then he increased his, you know, then we, we put him on a gaining phase. So, so he's done it all, so I thought he was a good uh, client to show everybody. Um, you know, plus he got a full-time job. He, he's got a kid. Uh, he's got, you know, a ton of responsibilities. It's not like he just has got a bunch of free time. He's a single guy, and he's got a family. Uh, so just kind of wanted to show you guys that. Uh, any, any questions about that case study or anything? Nothing? Um, Yeah, so, so basically the conclusions from today. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be patience. It's going to take time. A lot, you know, it didn't just take us a couple weeks to, to, to get to where we are. It took most of our life to do this. And so we have to have the patience. You know, it's not going to happen in, in four weeks. You know, if you come and you got a vacation in four weeks, it's probably a little too late to, to, to get to where you want to be. Um, <laughs> But I mean, you know, I, that, that's what happens a lot of time. You know, we, we got a vacation in a couple weeks. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm getting in shape for that for that trip. And it's like, I mean, that's good. That's awesome. But chances are, you're just going to set yourself up to, to, to fail. Okay. So we got to think long term with this. Another big one that I harp on with all my clients is consistency. If you're doing this stuff for two or three days out of the week, within the other four days, you're just doing whatever. You know, it, it, it's it's not going to make a difference. You know, it's awesome that you're you're doing those two or three days, but we want to we want to shoot for more. We want to stay as consistent as possible. We also want to go, and it's going to depend on person to person, but we want to go, we want to limit those times when we do go off the wagon. Some people are off the wagon for a couple weeks, and they're completely off for two weeks. And what we want to do is we want to limit those weeks where you're completely off. Instead of thinking on or off, we want it to be a little bit of a, of a, a like a dimmer switch. You know, you're either, you know, there's times when you can be all the way on, but you can come down just a little bit. But we want to make sure that we're always at least doing something instead of just being like, oh, I messed up yesterday, I'm going to go eat <laughs> two pizzas or whatever, I don't know. Uh, two big, another big one that I think is huge is focus on your behaviors instead of your outcomes. Uh, a lot of people will, will get on the scale and they'll see it and they'll be like, oh, you know, I, I messed up. And it's like, well, okay, you know, what, what were you doing? Were you doing the things that you needed to be doing or, or are you just looking at you know, just looking at the scale, like focus on your behavior. So things like making sure are you getting are you most of the time getting your protein in, getting your veggies in, um, are you are you staying more active? You know, focus on those things. Focus on the things that you can actually do and then you'll see those outcomes. Uh, you know, go with going your uh, favorite. Um, there is no magic diet, you know, kinda like we talked about today. They're all just tools to get you to eat less calories. Intermittent fasting is great, but you know it doesn't do anything special. Keto doesn't do anything special. Just lowers your calories. Uh, and two, find what fits your lifestyle. So kind of go back to Ryan saying, looked at what his biggest limiting factors were, and we fit it to him. You know, I could tell somebody to eat more protein, but if they're already eating protein every meal, well, that's just not going to do anything for them. You know, find what fits your lifestyle. If you're busy and you can't eat eight times a day, all right, eat three times a day. You know. Uh, if you don't like fats or if you don't like carbs, all right, then, then lower your carbs. You, know, you don't have to, there's not one way to do it. It needs to fit your lifestyle, and that's going to give you to do more. Um, two, the last one, there's going to be ups and downs. You know, there's going to be some weeks where your weight's a little bit higher, and then there's some weeks where it's going to be lower, or there's going to be weeks where you, if you notice you're eating more, that's fine. You know, there's going to be ups and downs, just all that. But as long as over time, you know, it's trending the right way, that's that's all we can all we can ask for. Yeah, yeah I mean, just go in, go into any, any type of you know weight loss or weight muscle gain or any type of go into it with you know the expectation that it's just it's just gonna take time and it's gonna be like doing this is simple, not necessarily easy, right? The principles are laid out in front of you. Like this is how you do it. It's it's not super complicated, but it's not always easy, right? So don't beat yourself up. Like, God damn, why can't I just do this? Like everyone's situation is a little different, you know. And, you just gotta fit, you know, talk to what Jeff said, fit your lifestyle, but recognize like there's gonna be setbacks. Like, don't get mad, gain some pounds, just get back on, keep going, right? It's a it's a life, it's a lifestyle thing. It's not just a diet you do for four weeks or eight weeks or whatever, right? This is something that you have to you just you just do. It just becomes part of what you do. So I feel like too, you know, if you get your basics down, like for Ryan's example, you get your basics down, that's your new minimum at that point. Then that way, if you do want to go on vacation and if you got four weeks to go, then you can, you know, you can get it off with it. You got those little basics down. So there can be times when you can put more time into your diet, but as long as you're getting those, those, those basics.